Steve. This place, your home, is filled with so many wonderful things. Ice cream and rock and roll and many wonderful things. Character quirks, not quite traits, just little characteristics. Things that help flesh them out. Sometimes they're so ingrained that they're hard to trace. Sometimes they stick around for a while and are then forgotten. They can arise from within the source material itself or from fan and outside of it. It's always a cool moment when you can track the genesis of one of these quirks and also see it evolve. Such is the case with Wonder Woman's love of ice cream, which is a newer character quirk that firmly cemented itself thanks to adaptation and the pop culture media landscape surrounding it at the time. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics. Let's take a look at exactly why Wonder Woman loves ice cream. Specifically ice cream and not another food. For there are so many other potential foods out there to love. Maybe you're a ramen person. This video is brought to you by Vite Ramen. Yes, Vite, not Veet. Vite Ramen is a small business dedicated to creating protein rich and nutrient dense ramen. They make their own noodles and are dedicated to a sustainable and respectable work environment. Their CEO, Tim, graduated top of his class in culinary school but never stopped loving ramen. But also loved working out, wanted to find a way to combine those things together. Hence, a new nutrient-based protein-dense ramen. I have four flavors that I was able to try out. Vegan white miso, beef pho, roasted soy sauce chicken, and garlic pork tonkatsu, which was my favorite one. You can buy cup noodles, flavor packets, either as a one-time order or set up a subscription if you're really enjoying the product. With the cup noodles, which is what I got, you get the cup, the noodles, the flavor packet, and the oil, and then you can customize it to your heart's content. Cause that's half the fun of ramen, for me anyway. They also sent me this hooked ramen spoon, which you can also buy. I did not have a hooked ramen spoon, and this changed my life. With all of that protein, this is more filling than your average ramen. And with the options left open, you can really play around and make your own unique, delicious ramen. Click the link below to get a bundle that gives you free gifts and free shipping in the contiguous USA. And don't forget to use my code CASUALLY at the checkout for an additional 10% off. That's viteramen.com slash casually, or just click the link below and use the code CASUALLY. Now it's time to live life on the edge, having some ice cream like Diana. Diana's love of this sweet, creamy treat is not really old. You don't have to go very deep into her history to find it. Being one of the golden age heroes, she has a long lexicon of works to pull from, having a beautiful all the way back in 1941. But this sweet treat loving detail hails from 2011 and the new 52. Not so new anymore. That's always the inevitable event of any title that has the word new attached to it as an actual part of it. One day it will not be new. The old 52, just the 52, even though there's another event called the 52. The new 52 is a hard reboot of the DC Comics canon following the events of Flashpoint, wherein Barry, I'll mess up your timeline, Alan had gone back in time to save his mom, despite knowing better. Years later, this would be retconned to try and make it less Barry's fault. They would talk to Watchmen and it would be a whole thing. Regardless of where you want to place the blame, at the time when Barry was actually able to fix the events and change the time stream back, it didn't come back exactly the same. There were changes, significant changes. One of which was the timeline of which superheroes have been operating. It was smushed and many legacy heroes, at least at the start, were thrown to the wayside, just eliminated. And some were operating in time frames so tight that you dared not think of them for that way lay madness. There was also a lack of internal memos, so some things didn't line up across books. It was also an opportunity to tweak origins or character attitudes. And this happened with Wonder Woman, who was taken back to having just arrived in man's world and being a fish out of water, a warrior fish, always looking for a fight. The ice cream moment doesn't come from the Wonder Woman title, but rather from the Justice League title. From their first arc, which was in the comics just called Justice League, when collected in first trade called Origin, and then the movie adaptation it was called Justice League War. Just getting a bit more dramatic each time. These first issues were written by Jeff Johns, with art by Jim Lee, inks by Scott Williams, colors Alex Sinclair, with Hi-Fi and Gabe Taib on issue 3, which is where Wonder Woman appears. Now these issues had to do a lot. They're pulling the classic there's a huge threat, and that's why the Justice League has to come together. But also because of this new superheroes in general have only been operating for 5 years, minus Batman who got 10, you also need to establish all these first meetings. Then establish some dynamics between between the characters, interpersonal ones, and then some individual character traits, so a bit of a baseline personality for each. And in the case of Cyborg, he needs to actually become Cyborg, so it was packing a lot in. In some cases, dynamics were completely flipped on their head from what they had been in the prior timeline, and that could be disconcerting. Here's just one example. Hal and Bruce's tension and eventual grudging respect was replaced with an almost instant friendship. Bruce even smiled at him. It was so atypical that in the adaptation version of it ended up launching a ship. I remember. I was there, Gandalf. I was there when Batman took Hal's ring off his finger because he wasn't paying attention. I was there when Hal all of a sudden had the nickname Spooky for Batman. <laughs> if you had been reading the previous timeline and then this timeline, it was such intense whiplash because that past characterization still lived in your mind if you had been reading up to that point. If you were a new reader, it was a different experience. Because they could. This was a new timeline. Wonder 
when he's introduced in issue 3, after having left Washington where she was being observed by Steve Trevor, slash working with. There was already controversy about her, as you can see detailed by TV stations blasting people's takes about her. She bust out after she saw the parademons on TV and thought they were herpes and felt she had to do something. So she's just wandering the streets looking for these monsters. Now while most people are giving her a wide berth, because she's just wandering the streets with a sword, and she also has a bad reputation, and she's also just yelling asking if people have seen harpies. I was told a winged monster was attacking some of you? Harpies are nasty creatures, but they won't be a bother once their heads are severed. I'm speaking your language correctly, am I not? Cool! Someone didn't watch their Stranger Danger propaganda videos. You're Wonder Woman! My name is Diana. My name's Raquel. Thank you for speaking with me, Raquel. You're not afraid of me. Not really. What are you eating? Oops. Ice cream. Ice cream? Haven't you ever had ice cream? No. It's the greatest food in the world if you ask me. Hmm. May I try some ice cream? And another for my friend. Hmm. Ice cream is wonderful. I really want to know what flavor it is. It looks like it's probably strawberry, but it could be some other flavor. It's a little bit tinted, a little purpley. Could be one of those kid flavors like unicorn or maybe a sneak attack blueberry. These are useless details that I need to know. You should be very proud of this achievement. Uh, thanks. Steve, this place, your home, is filled with so many wonderful things. Ice cream and rock and roll and many wonderful things. But there is also a darkness that lurks here too. One I'm going to fight. That's what I'm here for. That's why I'm staying to fight for ice cream. There's something so incredibly amusing about Diana making this whole the world is beautiful speech while holding this ice cream that really does not have a very large scoop on it. That person ripped them off. She doesn't have a lot of ice cream to brandish in that cone. Not that she paid for it, but still. Diana isn't conveying much emotion in these panels, which is worth noting. They're nicely drawn, but at points they're a bit low on conveying any kind of deep, emotive facial expressions. Overall, the ice cream moment is here to round Diana out. She needs some softer segments to be shown as appreciating some of man's world. Otherwise, she comes off as a very one-note warrior type. And there's not much time to do things like this in this arc. So these moments need to stand out and stand out quickly. And they do this by essentially stopping the story, happening, and the story goes on. I know parademons are attacking, but Wonder Woman likes ice cream. Okay, moving on. To the rest of the arc, which is almost entirely a non-stop action fest, and a pretty fun one at that. I can see why this arc got adapted. It does a good job of having the team come together and showing their dynamics as they play off of each other. For what's essentially a rehash of every Justice League comes together story, it's pretty decent. It's one of the stronger New 52 starts. Now this issue number three was released in 2012, and the year 2014 gave the world Justice League War, or in some cases Justice League Assemble. Though not too many, because that is veering into Avengers territory. This one was part of the DC Animated Movie Universe, it's a mouthful, the DCAMU, which was the unofficial title for movies set in the New 52 universe that were connected. This is counted as the second film Film, with the Flashpoint Paradox counted as the first film in this era and the last of the previous. This universe ended in 2020 with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. I feel like I've been doing a lot of dramatic hand gesturing lately, like more so than usual, I don't know why. Justice League War recreates this ice cream moment but also presents a softer Diana. She's still keen to fight, she feels a bit more settled in the adaptation, and there's less of a one dimensional feel to her desire to fight. And they also dial up the enthusiasm. She was pretty stoic in the comic, not so here. I will try some ice cream. And another for my friend, Hannah. Hmm. Ice cream is wonderful! Told you so. This moment landed better for some and left more of an impact. They felt that it was cuter and just, again, the passion for the ice cream. They made it stand out more. The tone worked for the film, while the original more flat delivery worked for what was going on in the comic. Diana is shown to be further along her acclamation in the Justice League War film. This moment was where you saw a burst of fan acknowledgement that this was happening with Diana's character in the form of things like fan art or having it incorporated into stories. Justice League War awakened something in transformative fandom for a bit there. Then a year later, a less well-remembered instance occurred in the comics. This in Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman, part of the Daily Digital First Initiative when DC was more aggressively pursuing digital content. Although they're going back again to doing that now, time of recording in 2022. They've been edging towards it, Web 2 and other things, expanding DC Universe. Issue 23, Wonder World by James Tinian IV with art by Noel Stevenson, and I cover by Jay Lee and Yoon Chung cover to lure you in, once more features Diana coming to Man's World and having to help some girls out at an arcade and play Dance Dance, not Revolution, that's trademark, Retribution. And in the midst of her hanging out with these girls, there's a brief moment where you see her enjoying ice cream 
and then they bring it back at the end where she introduces her mom to it. So it was a thing, but what made it truly blew into popular consciousness was yet another adaptation. This adaptation strongly reinforces the moment, sending it on its way to something that feels more established for Wonder Woman, or seemingly helped to cement it. Again, time of recording. Maybe it's the future and nobody ever talks about it now. The moment was when it was repurposed for Wonder Woman, the live action film from 2017. This film also played with Diana having to adapt to man's world, and after finding that there were numerous things she is not keen to adjust to, she finds ice cream and very much enjoys it. Thank you. Eight pence, please, sir. There you go, pal. Keep the change. Thank you very much, sir. Mm. What do you think? It's wonderful. Yeah. You should be very proud. This scene is like a happy medium in between the first two. It's not over or under reacting. They downplay some of the zeal because of the tone of Wonder Woman's film, which while it had some lighthearted moments was more on the serious side. Wonder Woman ended up being a big success and was enjoyed by many fans. And when that happens, there's a phenomenon that comes with it, particularly in the digital pop culture space. Part of any kind of content creation is highlighted by the second part of that statement, content and the constant quest for it. So when something is popular, many will capitalize upon it in the quest for clicks or views as you do. One popular method for comic book adaptations is the Easter egg method or the what you missed method, usually with ludicrous numbers of things like 84 Easter eggs that you missed. These point out references or callbacks to comic books are really anything that can be found so you can make a glorious thumbnail with something vague circled or with an arrow pointing to nothing or maybe both if you're really good. You gotta walk the line between being eye-catching but not outright lying. It's a tightrope and many fall off. The needle too tight to thread. The pull of clickbait too strong. There's an art and a balance to clickbait. And to do it in such a way where you're drawing attention, but again, not just lying. It's an art, like classic Silver Age cover bait. Now calling the ice cream moment an Easter egg feels like a stretch, but it's certainly a reference, and having it highlighted in articles and lists and videos certainly gave it even further reach. It helped to amplify it, make it bigger. Linking to a past comic moment, giving it more gravitas as an actual component. The funny thing is, it's not referenced in comics all that often. In fact, it could be entirely dropped and few people would notice. But now it's in a space where there is precedence, so it could always be referred back to or highlighted. And adaptations still have not let it go. It was a more frequently referenced trait in DC Superhero Girls and featured in the formation of the team in 2019's four-part episode opener, Hashtag Sweet Justice, specifically part three. <laughs> This, of course, given DC superhero girls over the top style and aiming at a younger demographic was the most bombastic of the ice cream origins. It will certainly for younger viewers help cement the idea that Diana loves ice cream too much. Sweet Justice is also the name of the dessert parlor in Metropolis where the girls hang out. Cute. So you'll still see this moment pop up every now and again in fandom and fan art, in the main verse every now and again a light reference. DC is aware of it and sometimes they just pull it out at random moments, like in 2019 again. They had a variant done to commemorate National Ice Cream Month, which is a thing in the US. Ronald Reagan started it in 1984. This cover was for Wonder Woman 47 and is by Jenny Frison. Supergirl is there because on her TV show that was a thing for a bit, her love of ice cream. So does Wonder Woman still love ice cream? Depends on who's writing her. But it's definitely something more firmly situated in her bag of characteristics to be pulled out or referenced thanks to the history behind it. One small moment adapted multiple times, creating a ripple, growing more and more widespread with each rendition. Or maybe you've never encountered it before and this is your first time ever hearing about it. Let me know down below. Do you enjoy little character beats like this? Which is your favorite? Do they help round out a character for you? Is this an endearing trait for Wonder Woman or a meh, vapid? Share your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell in case that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time today to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon. Bye bye.